Welcome, baseball family. This week we have Sonny Gray has signed two more pitchers coming from Japan and your holiday gift guide. Nine Plus Us presents the Baseball Together podcast with your hosts, Blackjack Brad and Kansas City Little Big Briggy Blue Eyes. And now, Baseball Together. Welcome, baseball family, to this week's episode of the Baseball Together podcast. I am one of your hosts. My name is Brad, and I'm joined by our other host here, Mr. Brig. Donning the Santa hat. How are you today, Santa Brig? Tis the most wonderful time of the year, Brad. <laughs> Indeed, it so, is. So I'm feeling holly, jolly, joyful, and, and triumphant. triumphant. Yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> joyful Indeed. and triumphant. <laughs> yes. Well, for those of you who are, are counting down the days with us, we are 119 days away from opening day that's the real opening day not the pretend one in korea that is seven days before for the dodgers and padres anyway very exciting now let's get into it there's a little bit of news this week very very light actually uh, but we thought we would address a few of the items and then we would get into our holiday shopping guide for those of you who might be looking for some ideas um so here we go first things first and stay to the end of the episode because we have a gift for you you're right, Brig. I'm glad you remembered. Mm-hmm. You're welcome. Because I totally forgot because I didn't. It's write totally that. awesome, though. So we're excited. <laughs> it is totally awesome. We're excited. Okay. First things first. Sonny Gray signed with the St. Louis Cardinals. What? Like, am I the only one who was like incredibly surprised by that? Yeah. Like super duper surprised. Both in the departure from Minnesota and the arrival in St. Louis. Both. I don't understand all the way. Right. Yeah. I thought he was going to stay just because it felt like a really, really good fit. Yep. Right. Uh, And finally a really good fit. That's the other thing. Like, yeah, he was great in Cincinnati. Um, Mm -hmm. He did really well in Oakland way back in the day. And now it's taken so long, but now he's back. And I hope his, I hope his performances continue to trend, but why you would let go of him at, at this yeah, at this juncture, it makes no sense. But yeah, and that was, I think, the biggest thing there is that I was shocked that the twins actually let him go, that they let Me him too. walk away. Um, yeah. Good for the Cardinals getting a really good pitcher to yeah. get into the rotation. I think that's a great move for them. Um, yeah. It's going to be, I don't know, it'll be interesting seeing him in St. Louis, though. Like, I know he struggled in New York, and a lot of it had to do with the environment. And for sure. But it feels like the St. Louis environment is like as rabid as New York, but polar opposite. Avid, not rabid. There you go, avid. Yes, as avid, yes. and in the polar opposite direction of New York, but not Henri. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like those, like the it. fans. Obviously, they care about their team. They're passionate, incredibly yeah. passionate about it. Like that's what they're known for, right? For sure. But and they're not gonna and knowledgeable. Yeah, but I don't feel like they're gonna boo their people as quickly, especially yeah. as Yankee fans will, if ever. So good for him for finding a good landing spot. I like it. Because I'm, I'm a big Sonny Gray. Is fan. it good like though? Him. That's the thing though, because St. Louis, like, so he got what three years and seventy five mil. Yeah. That's not a bad deal for him, but is it the best deal? Is what am I trying to say? St. Louis was in shambles this season, so I right. want to know what's the incentive for him other than the money, which is great. And if that's all it is, that's fine. More power to him, but it's interesting. So this this is the thing that I think it is: is he wants to go somewhere where he has a chance to actually win? Okay, for I sure. He has that does. Minnesota, right? And Mm. yes, St. Louis was bad this year, but Mm. it's St. Louis. Any given year, they could turn it around and make the playoffs and go on a run to the World Series. For sure. Because of the culture that they've established there and the pipeline that they've they've built forever, right? Like, I am not a St. Louis Cardinals aficionado. I don't pretend to be. I don't know what their pipeline looks like. But Mm. given their history and what everybody understands about the Cardinals, you assume that things are in order, right? That they could pop off at any time. I agree with that. So that's, that's why I think it's a good fit. Okay. I like that. So I like that a lot. 
there was a pretty big trade that went down uh, last week. As a mm. Mariners fan, I was shocked, but I don't think I should have been as much as I was looking okay. at it again. Yeah. Eugenio Suarez, also known as Gino Suarez, was traded to the Diamondbacks for two players. The Mariners got back Sevi Zavala, a backup catcher, and Carlos Vargas, a reliever who throws gas, right? Yeah, yeah. So my first uh, my my first reaction was, this is terrible. I hate this. Like, what are you doing? You're trading away one of your main clubhouse guys, a borderline gold glover at third base, and somebody who could be in the argument for a silver slugger if he didn't strike out so much. Right, right. Right, that's the problem. And they knew that when they got him. Like, I remember before the 2022 season started, listening to Jerry DePoto talk about Gino, and mm-hmm. <laughs> he's like, there's a lot of swing and miss in his game. Yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah. they knew that getting him, right? But his role in the clubhouse was so huge. Like, that's the problem I had, is that his his whole big thing was good vibes. Good vibes yeah. only. And he, like, preached that throughout the clubhouse, and it was contagious. For right? sure. Yeah. So that was the issue I had. But before I get into it, though, Brig, I mean, your limited exposure, I'm sure it is Zavala and Vargas. For Gino, who I think you are somewhat familiar with, right? Like, do you have sure. any initial opinions or? Takes yeah, I on do. That? I I was like, okay, hold on. What's what's with the, an additional trade for a capable, uh, you know, known quantity moving away from Seattle to Arizona in search of prospects or up and comers or maybes. And well, Zavala uh, has been around for a while. Yeah, Zavala. You're, yeah, yeah, yeah. But a backup catcher, it's like, I'm like, well, so that's what's interesting to me. I'm just like, w- we saw that with, uh, oh man, what's the kid's name that came up this year out of nowhere that's now in Seattle? He he was great in Arizona at the first part of the year. Oh man. Oh, Canzone. Canzone, Dominic Canzone. Yeah. Right. It's It's like, What's going on here? This is a pattern now. So that's that was my initial impression. I don't know what to do with that information or that impression, but that was what I first thought. Yeah, and so this is the thing. This is the one of the big things that management has been talking about that they're trying to do with the Mariners this year is to cut down on strikeouts. Yeah. Gino led the American League in strikeouts, was second in all of major leagues this year in strikeouts. Yeah. Behind him was Teoscar Hernandez, second in strikeouts in the American League. Also, nice. no longer on the roster. Right. So, what they're obviously what they're seeing, and this is what we've been saying for four years, four and a half years now on this show, yeah. is that, yes, strikeouts have been have become more acceptable in the league because people are saying, like, either hit it out or hit a strikeout or strike out, whatever, you know. But yeah. the problem with a strikeout is that it's a, it's a non-productive at bat. And the Mariners are trying to get more productive at bats because they struck out so much this year. They left guys. I think they left more people on base than anybody across the league this year. If that's true, that is not a way to win your division, let alone any sort of championship. Right. Yeah. So they're trying to just put the ball in play. And we've also seen with the Mariners, what they call chaos ball. They're calling it chaos ball. The ball gets in play. All hell breaks loose. And that's when the Mariners are at their best. They're trying to get more in that direction, getting the ball in play and not having those unproductive at bats. And as much as I love Gino and sad to see him go, I think it's a good move. It yeah. Zavala is gonna be a he's a defensive first catcher, which is what the Mariners need as a backup because they haven't had that in the last few years. And Vargas, from what I've read about him and know about the Mariners pitching staff, like their pitching coaches, he's yeah. gonna be a stud. He's gonna That's be awesome. Great. So it'll be a good trade in the end. So left on base leaders for this season. Uh Cardinals 1183 left on base. Seattle's all the way at 6th with 1144. Where are they at in the American League though? Let's Out see. of that bunch. Toronto is ahead of them, Texas is ahead of them, okay. and then Seattle. They're in third place okay, in the American. So third. League. Yeah, I knew they were like top 3 or 4 in the American League. Yeah. So that's true story, that, but that's a problem though. You're not going to win a bunch of games by doing that. No. And Even that's one of the things just did. That's kind of interesting. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. 
Mm. But if you hit more home runs than anybody, you're going to. Yeah, there that. you go. So. <laughs> and if you can yeah. continue to do that through the postseason, which has been a problem in the past, but was you, not a problem this year. All you got to do is have Corey Seager, apparently, apparently. and uh, Will Smith. Then you're good. I don't know what's going on there. Yeah, that's what it seems like. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yoshinobu Yakunobu. Yamamoto. Yamamoto. Yeah, I yeah. don't know why that was so hard for me to get into, get into just now, but it was. <laughs> <laughs> so we talked about him last week or like a week before something like that, where he had yeah. said that he only wanted to play in a big market. So we were like Mets or Yankees, right? Like that was the yeah. big thing I think that we had landed on. But his agent says he's willing to play anywhere. My first question for you, Brig, do you buy it? No. <laughs> Me neither. No, and it Me won't neither. matter anyway, because the Yankees and the Mets are going after him so hard that he'll get to pick the biggest money bag. It won't matter. Nobody else is going to be able to compete with the dollar bills that the New York teams are going to throw at him. So this is a moot argument for me. I, d- I don't think the guy cares one bit for culture. Really, I don't think that's a priority. I think he wants to win, and I think he wants to make a crap load of money, and I think he wants a team that's going to let him ride out the Tommy John problem that he's bound to have. That's it. That's all he wants, I think. I think you're right. I will throw one more team in there because I saw him at a Laker game the other day. Oh, I did. On I heard about that. Yeah. yeah. So I would throw the Dodgers in there. Here's the deal with the Dodgers. Contender. I realized, uh, I and I think I saw, I don't remember how, I saw this on a headline, but did a little bit of digging. And the Dodgers have so much open payroll that they could land so many blockbuster stars this offseason and still would be totally fine. Yeah. Well, and they don't Scary. seem to care like a ton about the luxury tax. No, they don't. Or the competitive balance tax. Yeah. So they might just try to pay all those guys anyway. Yeah. And they, they could, have a ton of money. They, We've seen they have the it. revenue for it and everything. It's not going to be a problem if they do. Right. So could you imagine I, oh. Yamamoto and Otani in that lineup in 2020? Well, and what about you add Mike Trout? <laughs> I think Artie Moreno would rather die than send Mike Trout right. to the Dodgers. I think you're right. But it is interesting. It is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That is it would be fascinating. Oh my gosh. He does. What if Juan Soto, though. instead of Mike Trout, what if Juan Soto ended up in a Dodger uniform? You would think they would be the, this is bad. the odds on favorites. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, at that point, it would be really hard to bet against them. Yeah, it would be. I might do it anyway, though. <laughs> Better odds, Brig. Hoist the black flag, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's. There are two more Japanese pitchers who have posted to free agency yeah. for Major League Baseball. We got Shota Imanaga and Nao Nao Yuga Nao Yuki. I said it like ten minutes ago. Nao hey. Yuki Awasawa were posted to free agency. Uh, Imanaga was a reliever for the Nippon Ham Fighters. That's a fantastic name. The Ham Fighters. He is 29 years old, and Awasawa is a starting pitcher. He played for the Yokohama Bay Stars. He is 30 years old. These are yeah. a couple of studs. Uh, they showed just a quick glimpse of their stats. Um, I'm curious if these guys are the consolation prize for the team for a team or two that doesn't land Otani and or Yamamoto, or do they follow those guys? I think, I think, well, that's interesting. I wouldn't expect them to follow those guys. I wouldn't expect that, but you never know. Um, now I'm second guessing my initial. <laughs> However, I think what's happening is they, their agents, their corner whatever you want to call them the people in yeah. their corner are looking at yamamoto and they're looking at otani and they're saying hey you have a chance to get caught up in this sort of mayhem frenzy. the heyday yeah. the frenzy you, if you're gonna do it now is a great time to do it i think that's what's happening not that they're bad players not that they're incapable i'm not right. saying anything against them i think they're gonna be great and we're gonna be you know, the, the league will be better off with them in it a hundred percent. But I do think they're, they're riding the wave. I hadn't thought of it that way, but that makes a whole lot of sense that, yeah, that there's kind of some momentum going towards the Pacific rim and you can ride it a little bit by, by getting to major league baseball. Now um, I wouldn't be surprised, like honestly, if, and they only have 45 days, right? And who yeah. knows if Otani is going to make a decision in 45 days. Yamamoto has to, 
He's yeah under. He's getting to be like he's under forty days. Yeah, at this point. So yeah, he is. I wouldn't be surprised if one of them followed at least Yamamoto, if not Otani, if he's made a decision by then. Yeah. Because why the heck not? If like, oh. what kind of a situation are you getting into in Major League Baseball? You get the first year, you're pitching, you're in the same rotation as Shohei Otani. Man, unbelievable! Pretty good situation, I feel like. But yeah. anyway, all right, let's take a quick break. When we get back, we're going to get into our holiday gift guides. Welcome back, baseball family. As we do every year, Brad and I have compiled a list of gifts specifically for baseball people, baseball fans in particular, and we are excited to bring that information to you right here, right now, because the holiday season is upon us. And if you don't have that stocking stuffed or prepared to be, you're going to be in trouble. So here's what you put in the stocking under the tree whatever the holiday you represent and follow <laughs> just do it just put these are the gifts you buy for the people that do baseball in your life okay brad you go first <laughs> <laughs> is it that late there break yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. there all right oh, anyway man. okay the first thing i have um i can't not recommend this because this these are literally brig as they say the best seeds ever oh Yes. The first thing I'm going to go with is Chinook seeds. Get yourself some Chinook seeds. Get somebody you love Chinook seeds. I'm not kidding you when I tell you they are the best seeds ever. You can use code BTPOD at checkout and get 5% off your order. Save some money. Save a little bit on shipping, a little bit on tax, whichever, however you decide to shake it out for yourself. But they have a bunch of excellent flavors. And if you're not sure what to get, you can get a sample pack for 10 bucks. Comes yeah. with uh, original jalapeno ranch. Briggs' favorite, the parm Parmesan and pepper. My yeah, favorite, Parmesan. the hatch chili. My other favorite, which is the absolute truth, by the way, Brig, is the cinnamon toast. Ooh. There are some others in there that are absolutely terrific and fantastic in and of themselves. Go check them out, chinookseedery.com. We're going to have yeah. a link to everything. All the stuff we bring up is going to be down in the description so you can get there easily. My kid's favorite is uh, Smokehouse Barbecue. That one is also fantastic. It is so good. And you know what, Brig? So I was thinking about this the other day. So I'm I'm actually out of Chinook seeds. I need to get myself an order. I was eating another brand that was once my favorite. Yes. The other day. Mm -hmm. And I ate probably a third of what I would have eaten, like in a Chinook pouch, like the little pouches that they have. I ate yeah. about a third of what would have been equivalent to that. And my tongue was ripped to shreds because they were so salty. That's right. I couldn't taste anything the rest of the day. Chinook seeds do not do that. And it's the best. No. It's really well balanced, but it's not. They don't skimp on salt. I don't know what they do. I don't. Yeah. Know, it doesn't. Make I don't know how they do it. I don't either. It's, it's fantastic. It is okay. Go ahead with your next. Okay, one. that was a great one, by the way. Thank you. Um. Okay, my first one. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I love a necklace. Even as a man, some people really don't understand that, but men wear necklaces. <laughs> okay, and I'm one of them. And, uh, but whether you're a man or you're a woman or whatever, a necklace is always a great option. And I found these really cool baseball necklaces and I've put a link to them in the description, but they come in silver, gold, and black. And they are slick. Silver's easily my favorite. The I black I is pretty, pretty slick. The black, black is really sleek and cool. Yeah. And, and but the gold is really, really nice. And for a softball player in your life, I think the gold would be really, really cool. Uh, but those are available. I've got them on Amazon. They're made by Pro Steel. Uh, we'll put a link in the description. They are perfect stocking stuffers. That is perfect. I love it. That's amazing. That's an excellent Thanks, choice. Man. Thank you. Okay, my next one. I'm going to go with something that I think is kind of one. It's one of those fun for all ages kind of things. Mm -hmm. um, especially like we both have kids. Yeah. Right. So I, I kind of lean towards this stuff sometimes anyway. Um, it's a little game that I would love to play with my son. It's called MLB Slam and Sluggers Baseball. And it's a little bit like, like pinball and baseball. Yeah. And so like 
<laughs> it's so cool. <laughs> so you can see, like, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see this in the middle of the screen there, in the middle of the diamond, they have like the, almost like a cannon thing. And what you do is you put the ball in there and it launches it toward home plate. And then you have like a pinball, like a bat, like a pinball slammer at the bottom. And uh, and then you hit it and it goes it goes across the field. Like it either goes yeah. into one of the fielders and it's an out or it goes into the outfield and it tells you where you got. And it's a, there's a scoreboard and everything. And it is super cool. It looks like a ton of fun for you or the kids or both either way. It looks like something that's super fun. It's, I found it on Amazon. The initial uh, iteration of this I found was on Walmart for like a hundred bucks, like 125 yeah. bucks. It was from Japan. Yeah. This one is the American version and it is way cheaper. It's like 35 bucks on Amazon. Nice. So again, link in the description, go check it out. It's a lot of fun. If you've got kids, they'll love it. And I'm sure that dad would love to play it with the kids too. Oh yeah, bro. I would love to play that with the kids. Yeah, it's awesome. Okay, uh, I'm going to jump in here. My next one is a really practical gift. Okay. I I go to a lot of baseball games, and they're in the summertime, and especially here in the south, and at Truist Park or in Atlanta, the heat is just really intense. And so mm-hmm. every time I turned around, somebody was wearing a neck fan. Oh, we see those all the time at the zoo here in Phoenix. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought at first I was like, what is that? Is it, are they headphones or like some kind of speaker system? No, they're portable, rechargeable, fan less, like blade less neck fans. So, and it's $25 and it's supposed to be super quiet. And when you walk past somebody, I can't hear that it's a fan. Yeah. Yeah. But it keeps you cool. I'm getting one for everybody in my family for this next summer. And I think it's a great gift for someone who goes to a lot of baseball games because it gets hot. That is super smart, Greg. I like that a lot. I don't know why I didn't think of that. (laughs) Like I said, we see them everywhere. (laughs) I do need (laughs) to get one. Yeah, Yeah, for sure. I need to get one just to go to the P-A-R-K around here. Sorry, I can't say it. Kids aren't bad. Don't say that yet. (laughs) (laughs) Don't say it. My kids will hear it. That's not. (laughs) We can't be going there at 730 at night. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. My next one. I So I have spent more time on Etsy this year combined than I have the rest of my life ever. Yeah. Like ever, ever, ever. So I found this thing. It was super duper cool. Let me see if I can find it. I can't remember if I put a a picture up on it. You did. It's right there. The which one? I I didn't. No, it's not there, but we'll do that one. That's from that's that is from Etsy. We'll do that one next. So baseball people love baseball stuff, right? And this is a good way to get some the baseball person in your life, some baseball stuff all at once. This is super cool so this replaced something similar to this that i had already uh wanted to do but that was gone so i found this and here we go and i think it's equally as awesome so this is a baseball gift box that comes with a wallet a box of cracker jacks because they're only in business because of taking me out to the ball game and sure. a lanyard and just like a greeting card so this is 65 dollars on etsy but the thing that's cool the thing that i love about this is the wallet the wallet is it's a baseball wallet. You can it comes in either white, black, or brown. You get to choose. And the white one is made from baseball leather, and the black one is made from black glove leather. The brown is made from brown glove leather. So that's going to be the majority of your cost with this box. So don't feel like you're getting ripped by one of those like subscription or like mm-hmm. uh, curated boxes or whatever. I feel like you're basically paying for an awesome wallet and getting everything else for free. Yeah. So that's, that's one thing I I think is super cool about this and the lanyard in the picture, it's an angel's lanyard, but you can pick from 11 different teams to find the lanyard that you want. Brig, they have Yankees lanyards. Oh yeah. So I love that. That's a great one, dude. Thank you. I think it's awesome. That wall is killer. So cool. Super slick. I like that. That's awesome, man. That's a good gift. Thanks. All right, I'm going to jump in with... uh, Actually, I'm going to do one of these. Okay. You know, we love to have guests on the show. And we love to have them talk about their stuff and 
sharing passions is one of our favorite things, right? Baseball brings people together and that's what we do. This is why we're doing it. So when we get to have people on the show who are passionate, especially about the, the things we're passionate about with baseball, super duh, but also writing and books and storytelling. And we have had some awesome storytellers and awesome writers on the show. One of them is Tim Brown, who wrote The Tao of the Backup Catcher. This book is beautifully written. It is elegant, but it's also honest and true. And it tells the story of Eric Kratz, who spent his entire Major League Baseball career as a backup catcher and what that looks like and the impact on him, family considerations. This is a great book that goes behind the scenes and really gets into the heart of baseball as a player. And I think it's the perfect companion item for your baseball fan. I love this book. Yeah, that that book was awesome. It's a fantastic read. Especially as like somebody who played catcher. I was like, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's legit. I love it. And it was cool getting the perspective of somebody who was, or I guess it's secondhand perspective, right? Since, since he wrote it and it's about Eric, Eric Kratz and his, his experience. But no, anyway, well, I like, think it, I, it's a fun read for, for baseball people, it, especially, think, but I remember he, I remember he said that he was, uh, he was like a, a re, his primary reference. reference. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. 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 So. Anyway, it was it's awesome. And Tim was great. If you haven't watched the interview we did with Tim, you've got to. It was really, really fantastic. It yeah, was a great, it was great. conversation. While we're talking about books, Brig, do you Ooh. mind grabbing your copy of Got Your Number by Mike Greenberg? Mine doesn't show up against the green screen that I have behind me, so I'm having Brig be Vanna White for me. This was a super duper fun book to read. And this is not just oh, for sure. baseball people. This is for sports fans in general. And yep. you don't even have to, be, have to be a sports fan who likes to read to enjoy this book. You can just be a sports fan because he goes through 1 to 100, the best, I, I guess the most significant person to wear a number or, ha or own a number in all of sports. Like there's a, ra there's a race horse in there. There's baseball players, basketball, football, hockey, soccer. There, there are people across all of sports in this book. And each one is what, like a – a page and a half to two pages tops yeah yeah it's, it's really so, short super fast to read super easy you could go through and read two of the like read like three to four pages a day on this thing you'd be done in a month and a half and you wouldn't miss out on anything because there's no plot line to follow <laughs> right no, you don't yeah. have to go back and reread like wait what happened two months ago right yeah. so like yeah. just take your time reading it and it's super enjoyable heck read one a day for 100 days and you'll love it yeah, it's outstanding. It's so great. It's really well written. It's a lot of fun. Anybody who knows Mike Greenberg knows that he's got a fun, fun, positive personality, and it really comes out in his writing. And he de he defends his arguments. He brings up other people who think like where he considered for a number and says, "Well, we didn't pick him because of this, right?" Yep. And yeah. you can learn more about it, like more about the process that went into it. Uh, we had him on the show, and he talked about it. And Hembo, the guy who his producer from ESPN who helped him write it, who co-wrote it with him. Yeah. Uh, he also came on and talked about it. And so you can learn more about the book by going back and checking out those interviews as well. Yeah. Just as an example, uh, Serena Williams is in here. Rocky Marciano owns number 49. Uh, if you don't, if you don't know why Jimmy Johnson is in here and then you've got baseball like Nolan Ryan and Roger Maris and different things like that. So yeah, it's a yeah. really fun, really fun read. Yeah. I couldn't put it down. Like, I think I read the whole thing in like two days before he came on. Yeah, it's no, it was so much fun. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm going to do another book. Okay. <laughs> you would. Since we're on the topic, <laughs> I have two books. <laughs> I would. <laughs> this book I just got done reading. I have been, baseball family, I have been on an absolute, I don't want to use the word crusade loosely, but I have been on a tear on a hunt i feel like indiana jones trying to find all of the baseball literature that's out there if it's a baseball story i want to read it because i'm a i'm a storyteller and i want to know what the greatest baseball stories are 
And one of them that I read recently is The Fireballer by Mark Stevens. This book was so interesting. It was entertaining. It was compelling. The characters are great and all that. But the basic premise of this story is that Frank Ryder is a pitcher who is haunted by his past. That is a baseball-related tragedy. And in throughout the course of his life, he becomes a Major League Baseball pitcher, and he pitches 105, 108, 110. He reaches 110 miles an hour in the book. That's crazy. That is fiction. His yeah, his range. <laughs> it is his range goes from the uh up like the low 90s. He's got a change up that's at like 91, and then he 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 runs the numbers all the way up to 110 miles an hour. And he and it's very current. So Aaron Judge is referenced in here, a world as Chapman is referenced in here, things like that. It was written, I think, in 2017. It's it holds up Frank Ryder plays for the Baltimore Orioles. And what's interesting is not only Frank's personal journey, but also the the journey of baseball itself trying to cope with this new phenomenon, this this anomaly and what happens and what should happen and how much interference on the game, the owners, the players union, the umpires union, the fans, how much of that of each group, what their opinions are and how much influence they want to have over the future of baseball, given this new advancement, this new development. And so it's a really interesting look, especially as we go through and we talk about pitch clock and we talk about, you know, mound visits when a couple of years ago and all the different changes that keep being pushed and proposed and imposed. This is a really interesting look at the different angles you might come to those arguments considering. And it's a good story. So, The Fireballer by Mark Stevens. Cool. I like it. I might actually, I'm probably going to go read that next break. It's pretty good. You man. are growing my list of books to read faster than I can read them. <laughs> Dude, I, yeah, that makes sense. I read <laughs> a lot. <laughs> you know. All right. Next one I have. So, this is the one I was going to do earlier, but I didn't have an image for it, but I do now. I oh, got nice. it uploaded while we were talking about other stuff. So this thing is another Etsy find, Brig. If you can believe it, I'm yeah. telling you, I spent more time on Etsy probably today than I have in my whole life combined. Dude, I love Etsy. I'm going be honest with you. So this is a map for you to track where you go as you visit base, Major League Baseball stadiums. Nice. Uh, it's made of wood, and it's absolutely terrific. I'm just going to get with it and put the picture up. It's a good idea. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? I almost picked this one. Oh really? It's like one of the first ones that shows up. It's eighteen Dude. by eleven, <laughs> and so I it's almost... not small. No, it's not. It's beautiful. Uh, it's also not super cheap, but it is beautiful and it's amazing. Uh, yeah. So you can eighteen by eleven is the smallest, and then it goes up to sixteen by twenty six or twenty by thirty four for a whopping three hundred eighty dollars. Mm-hmm. Um, but. I think it's so cool. Yeah, that you can have it personalized, cool. and uh, and you have to know this is it says on Etsy that it won't ship until after Christmas because I got to make it obviously. Um, but it's one of those things that you can be like, "Hey, check it out! This is on its way, and it's super cool, and you're gonna love it. I know you will." So yeah. keep track of the game of the stadiums you go to. You don't have to. It doesn't even have to be like. 30 stadiums in a year it could just be one of those things you keep track of over time and it's still a really nice display piece to have in your office somewhere in your home or wherever you want to hang it because it's amazing it is bro i kid you not it was (laughs) i was this close to putting that on my list yeah but i did a ballpark map last year (laughs) i couldn't do another one this year so but that one that one's awesome yeah it's it's really cool i like it Mm -hmm. loved it Okay, I'm going to do another one. Um, okay. This one is geared to your kids or your athletes, youth or adult athletes or whatever. I have a ton of hair, a ton of hair. And it is a huge problem for me, especially when I'm in the gym, especially when I'm trying to keep sweat out of my eyes or doing yard work or whatever that kind of stuff, right? So I wear headbands. And so do all of the players in Major League Baseball, especially those with 
freaking long hair like me, right? It's this whole thing that's happening. So I think one of the best things you can do, especially for a youth athlete, is to get them a headband featuring their favorite team. And you can go on and find these. You can find the ones that their favorite player may have worn during the season and get them the same one. They're $20. And I found them on Shields website. I also found them on Rally House website. They used to be available on Junk Brands. Junk Brands is the company that kind of pioneered all of these uh, stretchy screen printed headbands. But apparently, they don't have the baseball junk, ones anymore. They don't anymore. I just they looked. don't. They have college NHL Ted Lasso. Yeah. Mm. I know. I, yeah, Brad's excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're going to get a believe a headband Probably. that says believe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yep. I'm going to get one. Yeah, you are. <laughs> anyway, so I wanted to make it easy and just send you to junk brands, but they apparently don't have the license anymore, and that is a crying shame. So I had to dig. I still think it's worth it. I still think that the the person in your life with long hair or the the youth athlete is is going to benefit from this. Even bald people like Brad are going to love these because it keeps the sweat out of your face. Yeah, exactly right. Because I don't have hair to filter the the sweat. So yeah. I have to wear that's part of the reason I wear hats all the time. I don't yeah. love that reason, but it works. For sure. I've been wearing headbands a little bit more. So here's the other thing, too. Uh, these have been available at every minor league baseball stadium that we've been to in the last couple of years, and we usually pick one up. Oh, yeah. Like for mm -hmm. the minor league team? Yeah. That's cool. So if you're at a minor league stadium, that's another good place to, to snag one of these. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm uh, actually, I'm probably getting. I might get one for Wilson. See, that's what I was thinking. Throwing his he hair has too. super long hair. Yeah. yeah so he, yeah. he needs headbands when he plays sports. Like when he's playing flag football right now and he needs one. So bang a ring. I might find one for him. But that's, those are great. Those are, they're super cool. Yeah. I love, well, I have I like, like eight. I have a pirate one. I have Yankees ones. I have, you know, oh, I, have, I have one that says everything hurts because everything hurts all the time. All the time. Uh, yeah. I have an army one. For what yeah, I, I saw they had army for. ones. Yeah, it's pretty yeah, cool. It's cool. It is. It's really cool. I like those, and they're really, they're really awesome. Sometimes I wish I actually had hair to go with stuff like that. You know, yeah. You, by sometimes I mean like all the time. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, okay. <laughs> so I have I have a couple more. How many more do you have? I have two more. I think I have two left. Okay, and then we have our special gift for the listeners. Yeah, that's right. All right. I'm going to go with, okay, so last year we actually had an artist on. We had Josh Trout on and talked about his art and everything like yeah. that. This year we uh, we didn't get around to having an artist, like getting together with an artist. But I want to feature somebody I follow on Facebook, not only because his art is awesome, I love it, but also because he's super funny. Like when people give him bad reviews, he trolls them because it's nine times out of ten it's they ordered wrong, but anyway. Uh, so this is Brian yeah. D. Oaks, and oh. what he does is he does drawings of baseball stadiums. This is T-Mobile, of course. I chose that because that's the one I want, and it's yeah. amazing. And what he'll do is he he will customize these. He will he'll take this and then he'll put a picture of like you and your family member and a family member up on the jumbotron in the stadium. Yeah. And he'll he'll draw you into the picture, which I think is something that's really cool, a nice personal touch that he includes. Um, you can go to his website, BrianDOaks.com. Again, that's in, going to be in the description. So you can get to it easily. And he has prints and canvas and all kinds of stuff, different ways that you can order and and get these for somebody who loves baseball or really any sport because he does basketball and football as well and hockey arenas too. So. Yeah. So you can get really any any your your significant other or somebody else in your family. You can get their their favorite team, their stadium, and uh, and you can order that. And it's it's really cool. I love it. He does such a great job with them. They're very they're vibrant, and yeah. it's it's a really cool, unique style to go along with. Just such a crisp, clean picture. I love those. I I have been following him as well for a couple of years, and his stuff is just great. It's just yeah. oh, that's a great pick. Thank you. I have a growing art collection behind me for those of you, you do. Looking, I would add that to my list for sure. 
my art collection okay. is growing, but it's like growing in my closet this way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Someday I'll get to hang these. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you know that's where it's going. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. They're future, future pieces. Yes, they um are. <laughs> okay, I thought I only had two left, and I do. I, I okay. So um, this is just fun. This is just fun. Um, but I have a lot of people in my life who imbibe. All right, they like to drink and they like whiskey, particularly. I used to. I'm totally stone cold sober now. But back when I was drinking, I would have loved baseball shaped ice molds. <laughs> These Those are so. They're so cool. <laughs> I snuck a peek, and I might just get that anyway, Brig. I, I don't even put ice in my drinks, and I yeah, think that's cool. It's so cool. I love them so much, and I still do the non-alcoholic things, and, you know, I'll have a soda with, you know, whatever. But th this is like a cigar or something, but this this would be the perfect addition to that. And so if you're just plain old a junkie, or if you have a person in your life who has everything and you need something really cool to get them. This is such a fun thing. They're not expensive. We'll put a link down in the description. They're on Amazon, but they're mm -hmm. not they're not expensive and they're super unique. You, there's no obligation to use them either. Like you just you just leave yeah. them in the freezer until you're ready, right? You just fill yeah. them up and anyway, I love them. I think they're so awesome. Yeah, that's super cool. I I peaked and I was like, that's super cool. Yeah, they're cool. <laughs> Peaks before we started. <laughs> okay. This last one that I have, I think is a lot of fun. I get these every single year for Christmas. At least I have for the last, like, man, it's been like six or seven years since I started getting these page a day calendars. I love them. They're fun. Oh, I, yeah. I went get fuzzy for several years. I went Garfield one year. This year I have Uncle John's bathroom reader. And next year I'm I have a feeling I'll be getting this one because I brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's baseball oh, trivia yeah. every single day. 360 well not 365 days because they combine the weekends. But it's immortal records team history and Hall of Famer as you can see it there on the cover. And that I think is one of the best things that you could get a baseball fan because they, they can either learn something new every day or they can have be refreshed about something that they already knew. And the thing, one of the things I love, at least with the uncle John bathroom reader is that it's, they have at the top, they have like the big chunk of information you're going to get for the day. Right. And then the, at the bottom, they have a little two like a little two or three line blurb. That's just some random fact. Yeah, And I wouldn't be surprised if they did the same thing here because I think this is a topic that certainly lends itself to be able to do that. So it's super affordable, $15.29 on Amazon. And, of course, the link is in the description. Go get it for somebody you love. Even if you're just looking for one thing to get them, this is the last thing to fill in their, their Christmas yeah, list. Yeah. That's awesome. I like that. And trivia is so much fun. And I love trivia, but baseball trivia is really hard. So having the answers yeah. right in front of you, that's pretty sweet. <laughs> well, and you can and the thing is you could text your friends every day and you can you can stump your friends with trivia all the time. Yeah. Like yeah. we were at the World Baseball Classic, we were sitting there eating dinner and we looked up baseball trivia and we were just quizzing each other while we were while we were waiting for our food. And yeah. there was a lot of stuff we were just like I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> who who knows that? <laughs> yeah. Why would I know that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was fun though. And I yeah, trivia is awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, time. the last one. This is the last one all the way around. It's my last, last one. Last one all the way around. And then we have our special gift. Okay, last one. These are uh okay, pause. I'm gonna take you down memory lane, Brad. Okay. Once upon a time in a land called Utah. There once was a boy land named... that is now the place that is now called Utah. <laughs> there once was a boy named Brig, and he was very small. And his family converted their garage into a manufacturing facility and a fulfillment facility for homemade goods. And that homemade good was scented candles. And we made a crapload of scented candles. <laughs> it was. 
it was a family business. We did it for years. We loved it. We hated it. We fought over it. We celebrated over it. It was awesome. But now I have an overdeveloped sense of what I think I'm smelling. Okay. And I have stumbled into a scented candles uh, all the time, a bunch of times. And I found these. There are They are team stadium themed scented candles. <laughs> They're made by Homesick. Homesick is the company. I thought that was the scent. I thought that was like the actual, like, it's Yankee (laughs) Stadium. It smells like being homesick. Hmm, I'm (laughs) looking forward to that. (laughs) (laughs) No, the company's name is Homesick. And it's brilliant. And they feature 20 of the 30 teams you can get on here. So this one's Yankee Stadium. This one's Truist Park. They have Oracle Park. They've got Wrigley. They've got a whole bunch of different options. Um, but I think that that's a really fun way to subtly and uh, quaintly, poignantly maybe celebrate baseball year round in the home. And they're really fun. Like if you got somebody a scented, like if, okay, if I got you a scented candle, Brad, you'd be like, thanks. But then if you saw it, it said T-Mobile Park, you're like, oh, okay, that's awesome. Like <laughs> Garlic fries. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It smells like garlic fries. Yeah. Man, if it doesn't I would like that every day, <laughs> and don't think I won't. Yeah, anyway. so I'm looking for the. I'm on their website right now, and yeah. I want to see what that what Yankee Stadium smells like. Um, it smells like milkshake, cement, and leather mitt. That's that sounds cool. right. Yeah, pretty accurate. Yeah. yeah. Bush Let's Stadium is red clay, hops, and oregano. Fenway is uh, fresh ivy, grass, lemonade, cedar, peanuts, and amber with red clay, steel, and leather. Wow, that's quite the. Did you go to all the smells. tasting notes? All the the top, middle. I, I'm just I'm just on the taste. the page where it shows all the candles, and then it says what's underneath it. This oh. is what it is. No, they get way more complex. So, so fragrances have three levels. You have a base note, you have mid notes, and you have top notes. And the reason you have that is to create a balance in the bouquet. All right, oh, that's okay. what you have to do. So you have to have foundational scents that have the. It's like a base note in music, like it lays the the groundwork. Okay. The top note is like a melody. Okay. I will say this though, Brady. Nose. <laughs> Minute Maid sounds fantastic because it is orange juice, waffle cone, and fresh grass. Oh, yeah. That smells like summertime. Summertime, 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 man. That's cool. That's really yeah, cool. That's I awesome. like that. Yeah. And you know cool. what, Rick? Like, scented candles are a guilty pleasure of mine. Me too, bro. You. Yeah. Me too. Totally. 100%. I'm not even I don't even feel guilty about it hence because of the background, but I uh <laughs> yeah. yeah. I walk into places. I see a scented candle, I walk in, I'm like Yeah, that's what I, I do. I, I walk over like pick a it up and shove it right on my nose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's sure. how I and then I walk out and I can't breathe because everything's irritating my allergies, and I'm just like, Where's Oh that? no. Yeah. <laughs> Every time. There's always one or two that I pick up and I smell like Oh yeah, that was that yeah, was. Yeah. It's sage. Yep, that's <laughs> sage. Sage, sage. <laughs> just got smudged. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so baseball family, the last thing we have for you as a thank you for listening to all of our shenanigans and ramblings all year long and for the last four and a half years. Um, it's not very big, but we want to give anybody who wants one a sticker i just dropped it i was going to hold it up here it is we have these stickers for you that we want to give to you if you would like one all you have to do is message us in instagram just slip into our dms and Mm -hmm. say hey i want a sticker we'll get in touch with you we'll get your address and we will send it out for absolutely free that is our christmas gift to you our baseball family whether you're a patreon or a rooter or not doesn't matter We'll send anybody who wants one a sticker. And I would love it if like we just zipped through all of them. We said, hey, we got to order some more, but we'll hit you up because we yeah. always will. 100%. Yeah, always, anybody sure. who wants one gets one. Absolutely. Um, and I'm gonna say, of our but I am going to say, though, Brig, right. one caveat with that is uh, for now, 
we're going to say through what December 20th just to make yeah. sure we get it to you for Christmas. Yeah. But if you're watching this after send us a message anyway, we'll talk. No, oh, yeah, for sure. Speaking of rooters though, that's what we call the people who support us on Patreon. They are our rooters. If you want to we should do a video on the, the the reason we chose the rooters name. That's let's do that sometime soon. That's a we'll have okay. to write that down. But anyway, we call them the rooters. And what we uh the, I don't know, they don't know, the Patreon is where you can support the podcast and become one of our rooters. It's probably the easiest way. It's the best way to support us. Go to patreon.com, search baseball together, and there you will find five tiers of support. $1, $5, $10, $15, and my favorite is the $500 a month support tier. For $500 a month, there's a pretty awesome lineup of perks and things that you get out of it there's actually really a lot of them too <laughs> a lot it's a lot and th there's one that i just am begging somebody to call me up for like i i need this in my life and so do you and it's awesome so anyway jump on there and and uh that's the best way to support the show if you like what we're doing that's the easiest way that's right and make sure that you like subscribe rate and review wherever you can if you're on youtube just pop down in there to the subscribe buttons and watch it light up and everything and hit the like button while you're down there as well. Uh, those things help us more than you can ever imagine. The baseball family, thank you so much for joining us for this year's shopping guide. We will catch you next week. Next week.